Hey there, fellow travelers. Mark here with Walter's World. And today we're here on the Shetland Islands. We're actually here in Lerwick, the capital of the Shetland Islands. And today what we have for you are 10 things that shock tourists when they come here to the Shetland Islands. And before I get started, I, I hate to disappoint you, but all those murders and crazy stuff you see on the Shetland TV series, yeah, that doesn't happen here. This is like a super safe place. Like most people don't even lock their cars kind of safe. So just have a heads up. So if you're looking for crazy murder stuff, that, that doesn't happen here, all right? Now, in terms of actual stuff that shocks tourists when they come here, the first thing that really gets you is, this is a treeless natural wonder. I mean, you go around, you'll see no trees, like none, okay? Well, okay, maybe in a couple of people's gardens and in Vaux, there's a few trees there, but in general, there are no trees in the Shetland Islands because of the wind and the soil and stuff like that, so you don't see it. But the thing is, you don't care because the natural beauty here is insane. If you see the cliffs on the west coast, you're just like in awe walking by there. Be careful, you might fall off the edge, okay? So have a heads up. But you're going around, whether you're seeing the hills and valleys throughout the islands, it's just, it's just a gorgeous thing. And the thing is, the geology here is so different in different places. You'll see different types of rock, different types of formations. You know, the formations coming out of the water in certain places, it is just gorgeous. And you're just shocked how, how gorgeous, but how barren it is all at the same time, but it is awesome. Now, the second thing that shocks tourists when they come here is all the stone buildings. Buildings, because think about it. There's no trees, so you can't build your houses if there's no trees. So what they build it out of? The rocks here on the Shetland Islands, and so you have lots of stone buildings. Okay, the thing is, there's a lot of gorgeous stone buildings here, granite and stuff like that. But what will really get you is when you see the Bronze Age, the Iron Age, the pick buildings and stuff like that. The foundations they found, for example, at Jarlshof is probably the most popular place that you're going to go. That you'll see the the Broch, well, what's left of the Broch, and all the all the remaining ruins that are there. They've dug up and, and excavated. It's really really cool. You can go to Old Skatnes, which is literally right next to the airport. Yeah, they have that. But all around you can see the Brox or what's left of the Brox around town. And Brox are the, the big huge kind of tower thing. So if you go to the uh, the Brox of Mora, you can see one there that's still standing. It is just super impressive. But all the stonework throughout the country, and it's not just like ancient stonework. You see more like contemporary, you know, in the last couple hundred, three hundred years kind of stuff with the croft houses. When you go there, they have oat straw roofs on them and go in there. There's actually a museum that you can see how it is. And until the oil came here or they discovered oil and started extracting it and money started flowing here in the 70s, a lot of people still lived in those croft houses. So it's it's kind of an interesting thing if you learn about the history of the Shetland Isles, about the crofts and their farms and stuff like that. So it is really cool. Now, remember that old Skatness I talked about? Well, right by there, it's by the airport. And the airport is the third thing that's going to shock you when you come here is because you can drive across the runway. Yes, there's actually a traffic light that stops traffic when planes are taking off and planes are landing, which is kind of weird when you're looking at this site and the, the plane's coming in. You're like, wait, is he going to hit me? No, he's not going to hit you or she's not going to hit you. It's going to come in and it's right there. And you'll see like ding, 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 ding. And they the guy walks out and, and closes the gate and the planes land and then they open it up and then you drive right through. You can't stop though. So maybe drive slowly and get a couple pictures. Maybe I'm sure that's you now. I don't know. But you do have that. It is kind of shocking when you're like, uh, uh, there's a road that goes over the runway, so that is kind of funny. Now, so we talk about the airport, it is pretty easy to get here. There's lots of flights that come here with Logan Air and stuff like that. But I think the next thing that's going to shock you about being here is what I like to call ferry life. So you can actually take ferries from Aberdeen. It's about a 12 hour ferry to get here and you got to book your cabins in advance to make sure you get a cabin. Otherwise, you're sleeping like an like an air, like a plane seat kind of thing. So do that. But actually, it's the ferries you go around to go to the different islands. I mean, there's over a hundred, there's like, you know, a hundred islands here, you know, and you're going to be going to different ones. Like we went and saw where our family used to live when we were here. It was really cool, but we had to hop on that ferry. And the thing is, make sure you get your ferry, like pre-book the tickets. So you're guaranteed your spot on that ferry. Cause you just roll up, you might be too late, or I should say you might not be, <laughs> there might not be enough room on the ferry for you. So you might have to wait to the next one. And it's not like they go all the time. So do have a heads up for that, but just know, you will be ferrying around to see these islands and going to visit all these places. And the thing is, some of the some of the islands you can fly to on a small airplane kind of stuff, but most likely you're going to be doing a ferry when you are here. And I will warn you, if you're taking the 
ferry here from Aberdeen or any time in the winter time, it can be a little rough sea, so maybe have some Dramamine or, or the bands to help you with seasickness, because that will shockingly really get you if you're coming here in the winter time. Now, the next thing that's gonna shock when you come here is what I like to call the empty islands. Now, remember, there's 100 islands here, but only 15 of them are inhabited. But it's not like 15 of them are inhabited with a lot of people. Some of the islands only have maybe 30 people or 60 people or 70 people on them. So it's more like a settlement on that island, which is really cool and you get to meet the people and stuff. But I'll talk about the awesomeness of the people later, but it is really kind of an emptiness that you'll find. So this place is like shocking, like I can really be alone when I'm here, you know? And that means with the limited number of inhabitants on these islands, usually the sites you wanna see is it's here and you gotta drive down the road to see it and then you drive back. So just get used to seeing like, going down and coming back, going down and coming back, which is fine because you can be driving, look out this side of the window on the way down and then look out the other side on the way back and then you can see everything and not worry about it. Also, in terms of the empty islandness, I think it's important to mention the empty streetness after five o'clock. If you're in like Larrawick here or in some of the other settlements that have some shops, everything, it's nine to five or the stores. So after five o'clock, there is nothing. I mean, there is nothing going on okay so you need to make sure you're making reservations for restaurants and places to eat you might want to eat at your hotel they have those things there so do have a heads up if there's no pub nearby maybe check out the local hall there might be a place to go there to grab a drink but it is something you need to think about when you are here because i mean larrawick is the capital and the metro area is maybe 10,000 people okay so have a heads up for that now the next thing that shocks people when they come to the shetland islands is the weather but i think a better way to put this is the ability to the, the fog here to work like a horror movie because it like really sneaks up on you like out of nowhere and then boom fog is everywhere you're like how did that happen where did this thing come from now we've been lucky since we've been here we've only had a little bit of fog but you need to know man you'll be shocked how foggy it can get and how bad the weather can get now it doesn't get super cold here but it does get super windy in the winter like normal 100 mile an hour winds yeah it does happen so be ready for that and even if you're coming here in the summer we're here in the summer notice i'm wearing a quarter zip i have a jacket in my backpack you're gonna wanna have layers when you're here because during the day, it can be nice. But once it gets towards evening, you can get a little chill in the air. So make sure you do have those layers. Remember I said it might be a little chilly in the evening. So you wanna have a quarter zip or something fuzzy to keep you warm. Well, guess what? The next thing that's gonna shock you is one of those fuzzy animals when you're here, the Shetland ponies. Yes, those little tiny fuzzy ponies. They're from here, they're from Shetland Islands and you will see them around the island. And you're like, oh, they're so cute. And they're shockingly cute when you're there and you're like, oh, I want to pet them. Don't pet them, okay? They're, they're kind of like, you know, rock stars. They're like, hey, I'm a Shetland pony in Shetland, leave me alone. And so they'll just love the grass they're eating. And also don't feed them when you are there because they've been here so long, used to eating like the peat grass and stuff like that, that they're used to like rougher stuff that's not as like, energy intense kind of stuff. So they'll eat, literally eat themselves to death if they're in like an overly green field. So don't feed them when you are there. And I think I should, I mentioned some of the other like cool animals that are here. One, you can see the puffins, which is always nice when you're here, you see them flying and diving in the water and stuff like that. You will definitely see some seals around. You can see otters and otter crossings and stuff like that. And of course there's the sheep here. They're like little tinier sheep, the Shep Shetland sheep. They're, they're really cute, but they're also really tasty. Just FYI, so you have that. And so you'll see the, the birds all around. You'll see birders that come here. So there's a lot of animals you can see. And sometimes if you're lucky, you actually see a pot of orcas or other whales. And that's a really kind of a cool thing to do. Now, the eighth thing that might shock when you come here, and maybe it won't shock you so much, you've been in Scotland, but just how nice and friendly and welcoming the people of the Shetland Islands are. I mean, Scotland in general has like some awesome people and they are super friendly and helpful, but like Shetland like takes it to the next level in terms of helping you out, figuring things out for you. We're here exploring our, our, our ancestors. And when people find out, oh, what are your ancestors? They're helping us figure out which house was there, where you needed to go. Oh, here's some records. Oh, we went to Wallsey, okay? It's an island over there. And the lady came and opened up the museum for us. And on a day it was closed, just so we could learn about the area. And we shared with her, had tea and cookies and biscuits, I should say. It was just a really great thing. And the people are wonderful. And the thing is, I know for a lot of travelers, sometimes it's hard to meet locals. Look, take the time to say hi to some of the locals. If you don't, on Sundays, you can go have tea with the locals, okay? So Sunday afternoons at the local halls, you can actually go there and they'll have, you know, coffee, tea and biscuits and stuff like that. You can go sit, have some stuff, chat with the 
locals meet them to learn some more. So definitely do that because it's a really fun thing to do and it gives you a chance to meet some of the great locals here. And the thing is, is that when you meet the locals, you might notice another thing that shocks you that goes along with the people is their accent. I mean, I know we make jokes about the Scottish accent and the farther you go north, the crazier the accent seems. Well, Shetland's like another level of that. So don't be surprised if you don't quite understand everything everyone tells you or says to you. So you might have a lot of smiling and, and yes, yesing over there or asking to repeat themselves. It's okay. They know it as well. Um, and the thing is, you're going to be talking to the locals. Maybe you're going to see some of the local weavers. You know, you might see some of the, the, the ladies here that are weavers. You can see some cool stuff. I mean, there's a weaving museum. We met Wilma, who's the Shetland designer. She showed us how she was making uh, the designs for the weaves and the, the weaving with the wool for the sweaters and the hats and stuff like that. So it's really kind of a cool thing. So definitely take the time to meet the locals because they really are super nice. Now, the next thing that shocks people, and this is not just in, in Shetland, but this is all over Scotland, is a lot of people, when they think of Scottish food, they think, oh, it's haggis and that's it. Look, here in Shetland, it's not a haggis country, man. This place, this place is seafood. You're gonna have amazing mussels. Oh my gosh, you're gonna have those like, and your tummy's gonna be so surprised. Feed me more, feed me more. You can have scallops from Orkney that come up here or some they get around here. The salmon, um, you can have, we had monkfish last night. Oh my gosh, it's so good. You'll have so much seafood when you are here. But the thing is, you also get really good beef here. Oh man, the beef here is phenomenal. And the lamb, they have, a, they have like, the lambs here are, are a bit smaller, you know, and it's, I don't know, maybe it's more intense flavor because they're more packed together, but it is really, really good. So you can have a lot of really good stuff. And honestly, I've been trying the local brews here, whether you're at the Larrick, the Larrick Brewery or the other breweries around the, the islands, there's a lot of really good beer to try when you are here. But the one food I was sad I missed is it's not seasoned anymore is we missed the rhubarb and there's a lot of rhubarb stuff here you can have certain times of the year. So if you can have that, do have a rhubarb dessert or something so you can enjoy that. Now, the 10th thing that shocks tourists when they come here is the Scandinavian feel and influence that you actually do see and feel when you're here in the Shetland Islands. Because actually the Shetland Islands were, were with Norway until like a few hundred years ago. It's not that long ago that it was. And there's still a lot of bonds between Norway and here in the Shetland Islands. Like you will see most of the tourists coming here, if they're not from the UK, they're actually from Norway. I mean, there's flights to, to, to Norway from here, no, no problem. And so you have all this really great relationships. When you're in Scalaway, go to the Scalaway Museum and you'll see the Shetland bus. It's where they used to take refugees from Norway during the Second World War and bring them here to Shetland. I mean, it's just an amazing story. When you learn about what happened, you're like, why isn't there a movie about this? Because it's so cool. And probably the Scandinavian thing that's going to shock you the most if you're here for it, because only one day of the year, it's actually the last Tuesday in January, is Apelia. I know I'm probably saying it wrong, but don't worry, the locals will know what you're talking about. And it's basically the Viking Fire Festival. Like, Lairwick here, all the lights are off and you have like a thousand people going with torches going through the town and they have a Viking longboat in the square and they, I mean the park I should say, and they burn it. Like it's like a big huge fire bonfire with it going and there's partying and drinking and all kinds of great stuff going on and afterwards the party continues all night long and they go to the different halls around town because all those people with the torches that threw it and burned the boat, well they've all been practicing a skit or something fun during the year and so they go and they perform at all the different halls and have a really good time. But it is, it's crazy. I mean, honestly, look it up online to see some of the videos on it. It's nuts. So those are our 10 things that we feel might shock tourists when they come here to the Shetland Islands. And let's be honest, those are all fun shocks that you'll really enjoy when you're here. We've really enjoyed our time here, if you can't tell. Maybe it's because our family's from here from back in the day. I don't know. But it was really cool because we got to see some of our old family homes like, yeah, you know, like five or six generations ago. But still. You got some connection here and it was a really cool time and we really enjoyed ourselves. and we hope you can enjoy your time here in the Shetland Islands. And if you want to learn more, maybe the five love and hates have come to the Shetland Islands or maybe the don'ts have come to Scotland or what you should eat in general. If you're in Scotland, check out our website at waltersworld.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, and we really appreciate your likes, subscriptions. I want to say a special shout out to all our patrons on Patreon who help make videos like this possible. Without your help, we couldn't keep doing these honest travel videos because it really means a lot for all your support. So thank you very much. And if you have other shocks or other fun things about the Shetland Islands that you want to share, put in the comment section below so we can help prepare other travelers so when they can come here, they can have a great time as well. Anyway, I'll say bye from here in Lerwick.